I shaved. And I got really sunburned on my forehead too. I'm not sure if you can see that. <laughs> Sorry, Let, let's start the show. Hey there, winos. This is Vince Stop Wine. And today, as promised, I am bringing you another David Finney wine. This is eight years in the desert. Let's pop the cork on today's Wine Lab. Thanks for joining me. And before we get started today, if you want to be a winoceros, hit subscribe on this channel to become a wino today. I'll put out new videos every single Saturday. So be sure to hit that bell icon to stay notified for more great wine content. So this is going to be the third Dave Finney wine that I've reviewed on this channel. And it's not that I have a particular affinity for the Finney, but his wines are pretty popular. So Finney is responsible for the likes of The Prisoner, a Zinfandel dominant blend, which I reviewed and I can leave a link to that video. And more recently, I also reviewed, what was the name of the wine that I just reviewed? Uh, uh, thank you. The Papillon, which is a Bordeaux style blend from Napa. And now I give you eight years in the desert. So check that out. It has this really awesome sort of two-toned photograph here that is all about obviously that desert. You just get this really solemn and somber kind of feel to the label, but it's super cool with that hot pink graphic on it over that desert. Really an awesome bottle. Okay, so why eight years in the desert? So the story behind this wine is that after David Finney sold the prisoner, he was on an agreement that he couldn't make another Zinfandel they'll blend for guess how long? Eight years. So this is his very first Zinfandel-led blend since selling The Prisoner, and I'm so excited to pop the cap on this and see what kind of quality we have here. Let's find out. Okay, this is a 2017, and it just says California red wine, which I'm a little bit surprised by. I had thought this was a Zinfandel-led blend. Eight years in the desert, so let's pop this open and find out. Okay, I kind of expected that to have a little bit of graphic. It's just got the eight years there. Oh, that's kind of cool. Eight on the other side too. Oh, wow. Take a look at that color. Super beautiful ruby red color as I pour it in the glass and just <laughs> inky in the bowl there. Yeah, look at how those legs are just running there slow and syrupy. That's gonna tell me a lot about the viscosity and richness of this wine on the palate. Let's take the nose. I shall volatize the esters and open up those aromatics. Okay, and I gotta tell you, as I swirl my glass here, I can smell this from right here. This is highly aromatic. Oh, that is so beautiful. Okay, right away I'm getting this really classic Zinfandel nose. So it does hit you in the face with all of that sort of blackberry jam, raspberry jam, even a kiss of like strawberry preserves in there as well. Very fruity, very jammy. That's nice. Okay, and underneath that, there is a little bit of a sort of black licorice, and there's something roasted on there or something grilled on there as well. Yeah, a kiss of black pepper, I think, is what I'm where I'm getting that from. Not crazy oaky. Um, I'm not getting anything like dill or vanilla or anything like that. Okay, I can't wait. Let's take the palette. Okay, so before we jump to the palette, I will say that much like Papillon, um, I'm not getting a humongous amount of complexity on this one. Wine, but much like Papillon, I can also smell this wine all day. So for me, it is pretty straightforward, yet super inviting for what it gives you. Oh, yeah. Whew. Okay, so I took a little bit of time uh, before speaking again after I took the palate and the reason for that, <laughs> not because the wine like shocked me speechless. Um, the reason is because I was sort of having an experience there. Um, the wine was going through evolution as I was tasting it. So it entered on the palate with a punch of fruit. This was a fruit bomb and not in, uh, in an invasive way either. It just was packed full of really big, gorgeous, jammy fruit. Then once it was on the palate, I ended up with this really luscious, full 
embodied experience. It was all about the mouthfeel after that. So rich and pretty. And finally, as soon as I swallowed it, I was ready to, to start gabbing. And then I was overcome by this rush of flavor. It was just expanding with a little kiss of um, both fruit and pepper as well. That was really, really nice. And um, this is a wine that I would describe as gulpable. I could just gulp this bad boy down. Oh, this is so easy to love. Okay, it is a 15.5% uh, ABV. So uh, <laughs> if you gulp it, you're gonna end up uh, on the floor. But um, certainly it, it doesn't taste hot in any way. In that, this is a St. Helena wine and this is in the $45 price range. So it's a little up there for your typical Zinfandel and Zin blend. But I gotta tell you, I would buy this again. Yeah, I'm pretty amazed here. You know, I didn't feel that the the prisoner took itself seriously enough. It, it, it wasn't a, a very mature wine, in my opinion. It was kind of a starter wine, and so for that price point, eh, it's just a little overpriced. And then with the Papillon, I thought it took itself too seriously and didn't offer enough, again, for the price point and pretty much for the quality. It was a really straightforward wine. I could do a lot better for Bordeaux blends in a much cheaper price range. But this, I, I, I'm no joke. I definitely will come back and purchase this wine again uh, for special occasions or if I just feel really fancy that even. Yeah, this wine is just a complete delight. Oh, that is just a beautiful palette. Um, ageability, yeah, I, I think uh, I would prefer this young. This wine is not killing me on tannin, so it's really soft, easygoing tannin. It's not like gripping my cheeks or gums, and it doesn't have like killer high acidity either. So um, it could be a food wine, but honestly, I would want this just to enjoy uh, before dinner or, or after dinner by itself, just to appreciate. You're gonna have a really nice time just enjoying this as it is. Okay, well there you have it, winos. I know that that was a pretty quick one, but I really wanted to, um, I know I said I wasn't gonna spend that much money again on a wine, but I had to try this. Um, so I'm super glad I did. Let me know in the comments, have you guys tasted eight years in the desert? What do you winos think of it? And are there any other David Finney wines that you want me to go broke reviewing? If you enjoyed what you saw here today, please leave me a like, that helps so much. Don't forget to share this video with your wine friends. And until next time, winos, drink safe and drink well. Cheers. This is eight years in the desert. Let's pop the cork on today's. They're all wine lab. Wine lab.